In America, I'm homeless. Ah. I don't make enough money to afford to live anywhere. Feel like kissing energy? Mm-hmm. We can't kiss. Why can't you kiss? I have gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? Move over, Big Ed and Angela, because we have a new most disgusting cast member of the 90 Day Fiancé franchise. That's right, you're about to meet Lauren, a.k.a. the older brother of Daniel Larson. And this disease-ridden, yes, you heard that correctly, creep, is a serial liar that has literally manipulated his way into moving to another country and scamming a person into falling in love with him. So if that sounds exciting, make sure you watch until the very end of this one. And without any further ado, let's get right on into it, shall we? Trans woman is what I wanted out of life, but my family was not okay with anything but the straight lifestyle. So this is Lauren. He's 33, lives in Vegas, and his job is he helps out at drag shows. Now, this does not afford him much in life. In fact, he is currently homeless. And well, let's not beat around the bush with this. He is looking for a trans woman on this show who he found in the Philippines. This is not a place for comments about his sexual orientation or what he wants or what he thinks is going to make him happy. Those comments are not welcome. The main focus should be on the cringe of this man himself and everything he lies about. I have gonorrhea. Because, well, it's a lot and uh, some of it should be almost criminal to lie about. Within the first day of chatting, we reached the point of, I love you. Boom. Day one. And yep, it sounds like he's already love bombing his new boo that he found overseas, the ladyboy of his dreams, which that's taken from his own words there. Apparently where she's from, that is a okay thing to say. So I'm not trying to be offensive there. He just literally said that verbatim. This man is down for the cause, all right? And damn it, he knows what he wants. Get on a plane, go to the Philippines, meet Faith face to face, and make that last forever. So yeah, he's already raising some red flags just from how intense he's being. He said that they said they love each other first day, and he's like, I'm gonna move to the Philippines, fall in love with her, and I'm gonna live with her forever, and I'm never gonna come back to America where I'm homeless. Cause that's right, this dude is just trying to do this as a ploy to get out of a country that he cannot afford to live in, and be able to scam somebody else and leech off of them so that he doesn't have to work a day in his life and can live overseas spending somebody else's dime. I'm planning to be in the Philippines for three weeks to spend quality time with her. And if everything goes well, I might just stay there forever. And he's acting all lackadaisical about this right now. Like, yeah, if uh, things go well, I guess I might stay there forever. But no, that's straight up his plan. He has no plans of coming back to America. He's going to keep saying things like, oh, I'm giving up so much to go here. But in reality, he's not giving up much. Dude lives in his car, makes jack sh for money, and can barely afford to eat and put clothes on his back. So anything is better than that. And he is really trying to finesse his way into living with someone that can afford to pay for his lifestyle, too. And you got to make sure you give me that paper. That's real important. Ah. Uh you're giving her the test. So this woman is his last ex, who he had before realizing who he's really looking for, and she's picking up a girlfriend test that this dude made, which just sounds like the most theater kid bullshit that I've ever heard of. Seriously, he thinks these questions are so witty, but if I found somebody on a date that pulled this out and started asking me these questions you're about to hear, I would think they were an absolute fucking psycho slash weirdo, which he kind of is. <laughs> a lot of the questions are philosophical, and it can be a lot of fun depending on who you give it to. Yeah, anybody who would respond nicely to this sort of quiz being pushed onto them on the first date is the exact type of weird that would match this dude's energy. So if anything, this is a pretty good strategy for him to find someone to uh, match his freak, so to say. Have you ever been tempted to sleep inside the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep question. Oh my God, he's giving me straight up Disney adult energy. It's kind of giving me a headache right now. Please don't actually pull this questionnaire out on your first date if you want this to last. But anyways, let's fast forward an episode. That's right, we're going multiple episodes in this one. I'm making sure we're getting to the nitty gritty right away. Bro touches down in the Philippines and the energy is good off bat. They seem to be really happy and vibing with each other, which is kind of rare on this show. Usually they see each other for the first time and it's awkward as hell. Lauren is so excited. He's not embarrassed at all. It's a special. And as sad as it is, Faith over here, the woman that he's trying to fall in love with, is so used to being an outcast in her culture for being different from everybody else that she's almost weirded out by the idea that this dude is comfortable holding hands with her in public, when in reality, this dude is so down for this. Like, he wants her and only her. Well, not really. He's actually been cheating on her at home. That's right, another lie he's been telling her. <laughs> this dude is expecting to have an open relationship when they get here and she pays for his life down here for the rest of his life. But that has not been mentioned once and he's acting like also he's down for monogamy so just lies on lies coming from this dude and those are going to be exposed in the future in this video don't worry and damn it's a spicy Abracadab. Seems that... agreeing. <laughs> 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 
This is for you. So after that weird ass magic trick, honestly, yeah, you two might just be the perfect level of dorks for each other. <laughs> She's going to do magic for him and he's going to give her some weird questionnaire on the first date. It must be so painful to be a TLC cameraman, I swear. I made you a special test. It's the faith test. It's only 40 questions. So that's right. On the first date, they've been out to get some food. They're at a night market here having a blast. And he's like, let me pull out this piece of paper where I ask these super zany, quirky questions that are sure to make you laugh. <laughs> and meanwhile, she's just like, what the hell is this dude on? Some crazy things. Just like, you know, describe what is a bird. It's like grade school and... So kind of weird. Yeah, needless to say, she's not feeling the vibes right now. She's like, uh, bro's a little f weird. So I might have made a mistake having him fly out from America over to see me, but we'll see. She's still giving him a chance. I don't know if I would have after this, but trust me, she's going to wish she didn't once some more truths come to light in this episode where uh, he admits to some pretty huge things. And I know I'm being cryptic here, but it's for a reason. They're bombshells. So we're meeting up with them the next day here on the next episode, and they're at a market in the daytime now, and bro is just spending like his life depends on it. I don't know what's up with this because again he's homeless in America but the economy is quite different over here in the Philippines and he feels like a millionaire he's out here at the market buying her dresses necklaces bracelets and she's like confused thinking uh I've never asked this dude about his job but he seems to be spending very willy-nilly like this person seems incredibly impulsive and sporadic and again that's a pretty big red flag when you're getting into a relationship with someone and immediately after he goes on this spending spree at the market they head over to her best friend's house who is gonna grill this dude about his life and finally, some truths about his status back in America come to the surface so that his newfound love can find out just how big of a loser he truly is. What is your plan? So, there's an idea where I don't just go home. I just stay here somehow. And there it is. He finally is honest about his true intentions here. We get the vibe that he's been telling her the entire time. Oh, we're having it good over here in America. The land of opportunity and dreams. Yeah, you're going to move in with me. We'll be American. I'll get you citizenship. And instead, he's flipping the script now that he's gotten what he wants and has showed up here and met with her physically. He's just taking the mask off like, yeah, actually, I'm kind of a bum. And uh, there's a plan where I, I low key stay here. Like, I think that would be pretty chill. I was able to cash out at the market yesterday and it would give me a lot of dopamine to know I'm pretty rich by uh, this place's standards, so yeah, I think I'll just live here instead. And Faith's face, which I totally did not just have to try to record that two-word combo like 30 times, damn that's hard to say, is just instantly showing the disappointment in this dude. She's realizing she did not ask enough questions before promising that this dude could come over here and meet her, and this face is only gonna get worse as she finds out even worse stuff. Like, seriously, the whole homeless in America thing is the least of his worries. In terms of the things he's been lying about this entire time. But the issue is how? Because in America, I'm homeless. I don't make enough money to afford to live anywhere. And bro just flat out says, yeah, I'm homeless. I can't afford to live in America, which I don't blame him. It's expensive, bro. Costs $30 minimum to go outside, so I do get it. But uh, yeah, the fact that this has been entirely kept a secret is just honestly pretty gross. Like, that's something you should be upfront about, and he knew that would be a detractor for him, so that's why he wasn't honest about it. But now he's leaving crumbs of honesty as he's getting exposed and questioned about his life, finally. Oh. And their reactions are so crazy. Like, Faith is just honestly having her world erupt right now, just wondering why the hell she agreed to have this dude fly over here. And we get a very well-acted, oh, from her friend, who is really also realizing how much of a mistake this has been. The tension in the air is unreal. <laughs> so then he starts going over this plan where he can get a, quote, American job online and make American money, which is like a being a millionaire over here, and he could afford to pay rent here. And then the producers ask him, like, bro, do you have the skill sets to do an online online work from home job like it's not like you could just go out and get those they're pretty coveted and very competitive especially in America and already he hasn't been doing anything with his life career wise over there back home on home soil so <laughs> there's just no way he's gonna make this happen but in his la la land it's gonna be a thing for real I don't mind to have not enough money but ultimately faith gives him the benefit of the doubt and is like um yeah money doesn't matter i guess our our love matters but that coping is not gonna work you know you can only do so much of that until you realize this person has been lying to you about every facet of their life and manipulated you into falling in love with them only to rip that away from you as you finally meet and you realize what a bum slash creep they actually are and i keep saying creep for a reason you're gonna find out why so anyways after that super awkward lunch with her friend they decide 
decide to go to a dam, which is outside of town, but honestly beautiful. They go for a swim here, and the entire time something is really pressing on this dude's mind. Uh, yeah, needless to say, he's got a disease, and he just found out about it in the hospital because he was having some issues, and the doctors broke the bad news to him. Yeah, get those feet together, right? Mermaids don't have feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit of a weird comment about the feet, but knowing this dude, he's a little bit of a freak and very open about it, so maybe he's addicted to the feet. Wouldn't be the first time we had that happen on 90 Day Fiance, but anyways, they swim around, things are getting romantic, and it's at this point he realizes they probably should have kissed, but he can't kiss her because, that's right, he's got a disease, like I said. I'll let him explain. Even before I met you, I said I loved you, right? You're a lady boy. My dream. Oh my god, this dude has zero riz. <laughs> like, this entire interaction is so painful, but it's supposed to be framed as a super romantic moment, and I'm just not buying it. Faith does not know what's about to happen, and that makes it even worse, because she's going on about how beautiful this time is swimming, and how she's really starting to think she could fall in love with this dude. Just give it five more minutes, and you're gonna take back that statement. Feel like kissing energy? Mm-hmm. So we can't kiss. That's right. He just drops the bombshell like, I feel like we should kiss right now, but we can't. And you think maybe he's just like, I don't know, abstinent or something. You know, we could respect that. No, the real reason is f***ing gross, bro. Well, I have gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? It's a sexually transmitted disease. Yeah, as if it needed more clarification, bro's got, I don't even want to say it. Which you might say, oh, there's a lot of people to have that. No, it doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that he got it while supposedly he was only seeing Faith. Uh, at least that's what she thought. But no, he's been sleeping around back home and thinks that it doesn't count because they haven't met up physically, which is the most cope thing I've ever heard from a cheater. He knows damn well that's cheating or lying, at least. If he thought that they should have an open relationship, he should have said something. Um, when you got this kind of, you know, this is... Remember I sent you the picture on how Halloween of the girl from Thailand, but she spent the night. And then he's all nonchalant, revealing how he got it. It was like, oh yeah, you know, Halloween, I sent you those pictures of me hanging out with that friend from Thailand. Uh, she spent the night, <laughs> let's just say. A lot of people spend the night, a lot of times throughout the week. Which, first of all, I thought you didn't have a house, so I think that sounds like you spent the night, Lauren. But how the hell are you gonna drop this bombshell while smiling all creepily as if it's not a big deal? You're admitting to cheating with somebody and getting a disease while doing it. We are here dating for how many months? Online. Yes, online. Well, I haven't met you yet. Yeah, online. It doesn't count until we meet. Everyone knows it's not cheating until we physically meet. Even though I told you I love you first day and I've been telling you I love you every single day and promising monogamy with you. But, you know, you can't believe everything you hear online. <laughs> like, the gaslighting is insane right now. This dude's attitude is so shitty after he's been exposed for being a complete monster to this person. It don't count as cheating until I meet you, right? Yeah. Is still cheating? You think because so? You think so? Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. And the dismissive, smiling bullshit is driving me wild right now. I would not be able to hold back my feelings if I were her in this situation. I would be throwing bows right now. Oh, you really think that's cheating? Like, I thought we were chill because we didn't meet up in person. Like, no, that logic does not make sense and everybody knows it. It just makes me shots. I know, but it's treatable. You get one shot, it's over. And bro acts like just because it's treatable with one shot, it makes it okay. Like, no, it's the principle. It's it's how you got it. That's the issue here. He just thinks that it's the whole disease, like, which, yes, that's gross. Nobody wants to be involved with that, but it's because you got it while actively cheating. And then you tried to act like you weren't cheating. Like, I am going to have a freaking aneurysm already. You guys get why I called him a monster, right? Like, this is insane. And he's just dropping it so casually as if it's something that shouldn't even be looked at twice. Okay, long trip back. Nice and awkward. <laughs> and that's right. At the end, they take a very, very long, awkward ass cab ride back. And we don't know what the next day's like because that's where I'm going to have to cut this episode off. I got to the juicy part. Now we're going to find out what happens next on the next part, which I need you guys to like this video if you want to see that. If we can hit 4,000 likes, that would be sick. Hopefully, you guys agree that he is an absolute monster. And I am just mind blown by how disgusting he was acting in this video. So I want to see more. I'll catch you all in the next video. And until next time, peace out.